Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shells. Today we have our final folktale from the Slavic lands. And this one, this comes from the Western Slavs. And it's a story that you know very well. I can almost guarantee it. But the version that I'm going to tell today is interesting. And in fact, of all the versions of this tale that I've heard and told, this one comes the closest to the movie version of things in Into the Woods. For those of you that are not familiar with the traditional ending of Little Red Riding Hood, this may not be the version for your children. This is Little Red Hood. Once upon a time, there was a little damsel whom everybody loved that looked upon her, but her old granny loved her best of all, and didn't know what to give the dear child for love. Once, she made her a hood of red samite, and, since that became her so well, and she too would wear nothing else on her head, people gave her the name of Red Hood. Once, Her mother said to Red Hood, Go, here is a slice of cake and a bottle of wine. Carry them to old Granny. She is ill and weak, and they will refresh her. But be pretty behaved, and don't peep about in all corners when you come into her room. And don't forget to say good day. Walk, too, prettily, and don't go out of the road. Otherwise, you'll fall and break the bottle, and then poor Granny will have nothing. Red Hood said, I will observe everything. Everything well that you have told me, and gave her mother her hand upon it. But Granny lived out in a forest half an hour's walk from the village. When Red Hood went into the forest, she met a wolf, but she did not know what a wicked beast he was, and was not afraid of him. Good help to you, Red Hood, said he. God bless you, wolf, said she. Whither so early, Red Hood? To Granny. What have you under your mantle? Cake and wine. We baked yesterday. Old Granny must have a good meal for once and strengthen herself therewith. Where does your Granny live, Red Hood? A good quarter of an hour's walk further in the forest. Under yon three large oaks. There stands her house. Further beneath are nut trees, which you will see there, said Red Hood. The wolf thought within himself. This nice young damsel is a rich morsel. She will taste better than the old woman, but you must trick her cleverly, that you must catch both. For a time he went by Red Hood's side. Then he said, Red Hood, just look. There are such pretty flowers here. Why don't you look around at them all? Methinks you don't even hear how delightfully the birds are singing. You are as dull as if you were going to school, yet... It is so cheerful in the forest. Little Red Hood lifted up her eyes, and when she saw how the sun's rays glistened through the tops of the trees, and every place was full of flowers, she bethought herself, If I bring with me a sweet-smelling nosegay to Granny, it will cheer her. It's still so early that I shall come to her in plenty of time. And therewith she skipped into the forest and looked for flowers. And when she had plucked one, she fancied that another further off was nicer, and ran there, and went always deeper and deeper into the forest. But the wolf went by the straight road to old Granny's and knocked at the door. Who is there? Little Red, who has brought cake and wine, open. Only press the latch, cried Granny. I am so weak that I cannot stand. The wolf pressed the latch, walked in, and went without saying a word straight to Granny's bed, and ate her up. Then he took her clothes, dressed himself in them, put her cap on his head, lay down in her bed, and drew the curtains. Meanwhile, Little Red was running after flowers, and when she had so many that she could not carry any more, she bethought of her Granny, and started on her way to her. It seemed strange to her that the door was wide open, and when she entered the room, everything seemed to her so peculiar that she thought, Ah, my God, 
How strange I feel today. And yet, at other times, I am so glad to be with Granny. She said, Good day, but received no answer. Thereupon she went to the bed and undrew the curtains. There lay Granny, with her cap drawn down to her eyes, and looking so queer. Ah, Granny, why have you such long ears? The better to hear you. Ah, Granny, why have you such large eyes? The better to see you. Ah, Granny, why have you such large hands? The better to take hold of you. But, Granny, why have you such a terribly large mouth? The better to eat you up. And therewith the wolf sprang out of bed at once on poor little Red Hood and ate her up. When the wolf had satisfied his appetite, he lay down again in the bed and began to snore tremendously. A huntsman came past and bethought himself, How can an old woman snore like that? I'll just have a look to see what it is. He went into the room and looked into the bed, and there lay the wolf. Have I found you now, old rascal? he said. I have been looking for you. He was just going to take aim with his gun when he bethought himself, Perhaps the wolf has only swallowed Granny, and she may yet be released. Therefore he did not shoot, but took a knife and began to cut open the sleeping wolf's maw. When he had made several cuts, he saw a red hood gleam, and after one or two more cuts, out skipped Red Hood, and cried, Oh, how frightened I have been! It was so dark in the wolf's maw. Afterwards, out came old Granny, still alive, but scarcely able to breathe. But Red Hood made haste and fetched large stones, with which they filled the wolf's maw, and when he woke he wanted to jump up and run away, but the stones were so heavy that he fell on the ground and beat himself to death. Now, they were all three merry. The huntsman took off the wolf's skin. Granny ate the cake and drank the wine which Little Red Hood had brought, and became strong and well again. And Little Red thought to herself, As long as I live, I won't go out of the road into the forest when Mother has forbidden me. And that is Little Red Hood, the Slavic version of Little Red Riding Hood. And this story, no matter how many times you hear it, whether it's the Grimm version or the Perot version or this version, there's something about it. There's something about it. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll be back with three new tales. As always, thank you so much for listening.